then today I'm starting to transition the garden to autumn. The days have been getting a bit chillier and it's been raining a lot. So it's time for new plants and also to tidy up things and gather some seeds. So we're going to be doing all of that today. So first I want to refresh a couple of containers. I had a salvia and some lilies that did beautifully, but I picked up some new plants. Let me show you. So first this beautiful red salvia. I really love the red color. Oh, hello. Hello. We have a bee. Oh, look at that, can you see? It's already a very popular plant. I was gonna say, this is a salvia called Radio Red. I'll pop some stats if you wanna check that out. And it's a bee attractor, quite clearly. And I chose this one because I really like the red color. It's a perennial also, so it'll come back year after year. And I think yellow, orange, and reds are perfect for fall. That will be really, really pretty. I got two of those. I also picked up this gorgeous sedum. It's the first time I'm going to have sedum in the garden, so I'm really excited. And this one is going to bloom a little bit later in the fall, in September, October, with beautiful pink flowers. And they're very drought resistant resistant and deer resistant you should deal with that and they're also pollinator attractors for bees and butterfly so I'm really excited to add these to the garden so right now they're not blooming yet as you can see but they'll be producing some pink flowers very soon so that's going to be fun I also have some little tujas the fancy name for them is white cedar danica they're a very slow growing evergreen and they're going to stay sphere shaped to replace my boxwood so if you've been following for a while you may have spotted that during the last garden tour my poor little boxwoods got completely fried with this 30 plus degree weather that we got so I found two replacement on sale I really love that light color that they have and they turn a bit bronzy in the winter time it's going to be really pretty and I couldn't resist also a little flat of chrysanthemums so they're very classic for fall and this color of yellow and orange is absolutely perfect so we'll be playing around with this and hopefully they'll bloom for us until the first frosts. Let's get started. Always, always the cushion. So I'm going to start with this over here at some beautiful pink lilies and then here is my little salvia. So I cut it back right after its first flowering and we can see here we have a bunch of new growth but also same as my boxwood it got really warm and this area gets full sun in the afternoon so it dried a bit but it's okay. I'll repot it and put it in the back garden and next year it'll come back. And you can see here, this is a little trick. I'm potting up my sedum, so I've packed compost all over it, but I've left the pot so that I have the exact diameter that I need. And then look at that, just slide it in, pack it in, give it a good drink, and we're ready to roll. All right, over here we have the sedum. Just made a huge mess. Removed my lily bulbs so they look like this, like really lotus flowers. I'm just going to let them soak up the rest of the green and then store them and replant them next year. And then time for that little one to go in. So I've just given it a bit of a drink because it was really dry. Do you see this? This is a snacked on dahlia. Can you see like how all the petals are shredded? And I've just seen a little mice disappear just under here. It has three little topiary boxwoods, one, two, three. And then this one gets nailed with the most sun and you can see here it's completely dead and dried especially when you look inside. That one over here has picked up a little bit. You can see here it has a bunch of new growth. So I may just trim this one and try to save it, but I think those two will be replaced with the little tuja ball. So I'm not sure this boxwood is going to rebound. It looks pretty, pretty dried. Oh, there's a new spider. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, go, 
Go, yeah, no, oh, oh, oh. Oh my god, not towards me. Let's give that pot a bit of a clean. So what I'm going to do, because the root ball is huge, I'm going to do a bit of root pruning. I'm just going to remove the bottom layer of roots so that fresh ones can form. And also I'm going to try to brush off as much as possible of the old compost around the roots just so that we can replace that with some fresh compost and make sure the plant can be fed properly. It may seem a bit rough but this will really help the plant. So uh, also I don't know if I mentioned that, but if you live in the UK right now, B&Q has a really good sale on plants. I got this one as 50% off, so just eight pounds, which I think is a pretty good price for an evergreen plant. Now we're just going to backfill, make sure this is nice and centered. Hopefully it is, I can't see the other side. So this is what I use on my evergreen things like camellias and the box foods, a mix containing mycorrhizal mycorrhizal fungi and it stimulates root growth so this is perfect when you're repotting evergreens and it says here to apply in the spring which is what I typically do as routine but also in summer and as a top dress for autumn so this is perfect that can be the autumn feed summer slash autumn feed and get them started and help them re-establish new roots so it just says to use one or two and fall this is what it looks like now we're just sprinkling that around and we'll water that in ta-da All right, little guy number two. So I think this one can be saved uh, because despite some like really heavy burn that occurred a couple of weeks ago, it's pushing a lot of new growth. You can see new growth here is light green compared to the older, older growth that's a bit more emerald. What I'll do is just give it a very light prune and I can do that because we're not going to get any harsh temperatures. pleased about how it turned out. I still need to give another good clean and good rinse to the decking. But look at that! This is our little sedum. It's going to look really magical when it flowers in pink with the red of the salvia. And then at the front I tucked in this beautiful chrysanthemum with that creamy orange look. And then over here that looks miles better. I kept the little box with at the end there so that it's in the shade after the pruning and we have our two new little two yet topiaries over there. Looking really good. And I want to try to harvest some seeds. So if you've been following on the channel, you may have spotted that we had beautiful foxglove come up. So I had grown them from seed the previous year and they bloomed in the spring. They're absolutely beautiful. They provide such vertical interest and the bees love them. So I planted an hybrid variety. So it means that the seeds won't necessarily come true to the variety that I had before. They may revert to the parent, but that's okay. That will be a surprise. So I'll be harvesting that and probably some nasturtium seeds because they're starting to get a bit tired. You can see here, I had those beautiful fox gloves. They're now very much spent. Each of those little pods here was a flower and now it's turned into a seed pod and each of those has hundreds of seeds, like a lot of seeds. Foxglove, they're biennial, so if you want some next spring, you have to sow them right now in autumn. I'm already a bit late to do that. All right, let's do that top one. Look at that already. We haven't even finished shaking everyone out. Look at all, this, all of this, look at all the seeds. You can see that there was a flower uh, that turned into a pot. So all of these little 
seed pods or flowers. That's incredible. You can see here, those are seed pods that are not ripe yet. When they will be ripe, of course, they'll turn brown and then they'll open naturally. This is ripe and this is not ready yet. So once you have harvested enough seeds, you can just give the plant a good shake and spread them all around if you want. Just battle with it and then hopefully you'll have a few seedlings. Now I'm also going to pull those foxglove because they're done for the season and that'll give more breathing room for the other plants. Oh my god. Oh! Look at that monster. Autumn sown foxgloves. Look at that. a hole in my flower bed oh my god This is the loot. Look at all the seeds. I still need to take them off of the pods and store them in paper envelope, but you can tell, look at that. There's so, so many. Anyway, this is where we had the dahlias. And so at the bottom there, I had beautiful nasturtiums. As you can see now, they've been a bit swallowed by the meadow. I'm going to insert some footage of how they look like earlier in the season. It was a glorious show and I really like the variegated foliage. This is what nasturtium seeds look like. So these just fell off. You can harvest them and they have to dry to this brown color that you see here. And those green ones are not quite ready, but if you find them off the plant, like so, like here as well, it means that they're ready. This is a very good example of seed that's not ready. You see, it's really not coming off. I'm brushing it lightly and it's not coming off the vine, so it's not ready. Oh, we get all of those. Okay. All right, this is the hole so far. So many seeds. I still have to store all my seeds in little envelopes. So first I'll leave them to dry for at least a month just to make sure that they are all nice and dry and that there's absolutely no moisture that comes into storage and then pop them into little envelopes, label, and we're ready to go. I'm really pleased with how the containers turned out and also the seed harvest. So, so many seeds. It's awesome. There's probably a few more nasturtium seeds that can be found, but it will have to wait until we cut down the meadow, which we'll probably do very soon because it's getting it's getting a bit messy there but i'll show you that process as well so if you want to maintain your meadow and harvest more seeds from it so you can re-sow it the following spring i hope you enjoyed watching this video we'll see you next time bye tuja tuya tuja tuya let me know how to pronounce it also i went to the allotment the other day i got some potatoes and some fennel that i'm drying 